Well, after a hectic few weeks of EFL Championship football, we look ahead today to the final match week before the international break. Across Friday, Saturday and Sunday, all 24 teams are in action and we as always will preview and predict the 12 matches this weekend and encourage you to do exactly the same down in the comments. Give us your score predictions and if you beat or match my overall score for match week 15, you will get a shout out in the recap at the start of the next episode, which will be in two weeks time after the international break. Before we start though, a few quick caveats to get through. I'm sure for many the predictions won't be the star of the show today. What on earth's going on at Coventry? We'll talk about that a bit later. And also, just a quick reminder, we are recording this on Thursday before West Brom v Burnley. So if you put your scores in for that in midweek, or you do so here before 8 o'clock tonight, it will be considered as part of the next recap, where we'll do 13 matches instead of 12. Before we go and move on to this weekend, no, let's have a quick look back at the 11 games that have been played so far this midweek. Match week 14 has gone well, pretty well for me, actually. A lot of people went high scoring this midweek and for the second time it's been a low scoring midweek match day. Last time the record was seven draws more than half of the match week which was a rare stat in the championship. This time another rare stat from the 11 matches so far five 1-0 home wins. The first time that's happened in front of crowds for a very long time almost a decade in fact. That means that a lot of people struggled to pick up perfect scores this week because you all went for two ones and three twos, the normal scores we go for. And that means I managed to get myself into joint second place. As you can see, two perfect scores for me for the game I was at and for Swansea versus Watford, as well as a couple of other points, albeit I went too high scoring in both of those as well. That puts me on eight level with three of our regulars, Tony, Mello and Etienne. But two of you managed to just pip us to the post. Joint top on nine points, Brian and Peter. Both of you got two perfect scores as well. But one more correct outcome sends you to joint top in match week 14. Let's go and look ahead though to the weekend's action because there are 12 games before the international break. And we start on Friday night with Watford versus Oxford United. A big game for both at the moment. Watford's still in that top six position, a really decent start to the season for them, despite some of the panic after the Luton game. But again, it was frustration on the road after that one-off brilliant victory at Sheffield Wednesday. We mentioned everything went in. It was sort of back to usual away at Swansea. No shots on target, not many great chances, not a lot of the ball, a pretty tepid away performance. And for Oxford, after a long winless run, Back to their usual home form. And you've got to give them credit. They've been in nearly every game this season. And this time a 1-0 win in a game where they had very little of the ball. Very few chances. It was a bit of a weird one. The few chances that were created probably all should have been put away. On another day it could have been 2 all. But wasn't the most exciting game overall. But for Oxford a really good win. And it's all getting a bit tight isn't it? We've had these championship seasons recently where the table's been a bit more spaced out. Here, seven points between 5th and 22nd, which makes what's gone on at Coventry all the more surprising. But for Oxford United, hanging on in there and competing, doing really well. However, nearly all of their points have come at home. For Watford, they've been better at home as well. So given the fact that Watford have got home advantage in this one, I've got to go for them to pick up the win. Oxford will be in the game. They always are. I think they'll be beaten in this one. I'm going to go narrowly by two goals to one. Let's move on to the three early kickoffs on Saturday, beginning in South Wales with Cardiff City versus Blackburn. Cardiff, of course, beaten 1-0 away at Luton, a game I watched in midweek, done by a set piece again, which will be incredibly frustrating. It was a bit of a weird game because, again, the first half was terrible. The chances that Luton did create, the few of them were great chances, and it probably should have been two or three. However, Cardiff, again, were relatively solid for the most part. They weren't opened up at will. Yes, you can argue they should have given away a penalty as well for the handball, but overall you can see the improvement under Omar Reza. The one thing that did surprise me a little bit is that they weren't more a bit more ambitious going forward because Luton have been there for the taking defensively this year and it didn't really show much attacking intent, which I found a little bit weird at 0-0, trying to time waste, trying to slow it down when I thought there was an opportunity to go and win the game. For Blackburn... It's all gone a little bit wrong, hasn't it? We mentioned after that start to the season that we didn't think still that they'd be in that battle for promotion. And he's starting to prove that way. It was actually a really decent first half performance against Stoke. They were the better team of the two. They dominated the match overall. 25 shots, loads of possession. 
Wasn't the worst performance in the world going forward, but didn't take chances and then just conceded poor goals. And unfortunately, the championship's not forgiving enough for that. So for Blackburn, a really disappointing night. And as we mentioned before, they're going to rely on their home form. They've been pretty woeful on the road this season. For Cardiff, that was a first defeat under interim management. Prior to that, I mean, even since the interim manager, they've conceded three goals in six games. They're a different side now. And I'm going to go for them to nick a win here. I don't think it's going to be a pretty game. Blackburn haven't scored in four. Cardiff, two blanks in the last three. I'm going to go for one nil to the home side in South Wales. Cardiff, just to nick it. The second one involves the side that were beaten by Cardiff City as my club Luton Town travel to Middlesbrough. Michael Carrick picking up a 4-1 win against QPR. Finally, a day where they took some chances, particularly late on to seal the game. A really decent effort, really thoroughly good away performance and deserve to win the game. There's not much more to be said about them. Nice to see them taking chances. And because of the nature of the championship this year, they're still right in the mix and can now completely forget about that heavy defeat to Coventry last weekend. For Luton, a really important win. It wasn't vintage. The first half, in fact, was a, just a terrible game of football. Yes, probably should have had a penalty on a stroke of half time. A really good header from Jacob Brown from the corner to get the win. And you could see the confidence start to return to Luton towards the end of the match. However, another negative, another injury defensively. Alfie Doughty picking up what looked like a fairly serious, not quite late on. But overall, better signs from Luton. Suggestions that defensively we look a lot better. Amari Bell, so important to have him back. Mengi the same on the other side of the back three. So I think this game's going to be tight. Look, normally I would sit on the fence with Luton games. I don't like to be bold, brush or upset anyone. But I've just got a weird feeling Luton are going to nick this game. And I'm sure it's going to come back to bite me on the backside. We've not got the best record at Borough. But Borough don't often take their chances in successive games. So I'm going to weirdly go for Luton to win by two goals to one. But to be honest, I'm not confident of either team taking their chances here. So who knows what the score would be. The final early kickoff is Stoke City versus Millwall. And what a run for Millwall. Up into fifth place, four 1-0 victories in a row. The last two of those are home to Leeds and Burnley, the two pre-season promotion favourites. It's been a cracking spell from Neil Harris's side. Yes, not playing the prettiest football. Yes, going back to the traditional, not keeping much of the ball, sitting in a shape and nicking a goal. But you can't argue with its effectiveness. He's doing a really good job there. And when you consider what happened when Joe Edwards was in charge last year, you have to give credit for that. For Stoke also, not the most convincing, but back-to-back -back wins now. Nick that late one against Derby last weekend, which probably just about deserved. They certainly didn't deserve to win the game against Blackburn based on the stats and the highlights I've seen. However, they took chances. Tom Cannon, I know it was a penalty this time, but he's starting to look a real threat for them. And offensively, they hung on in there despite still looking relatively open. So good signs for Stoke. However, not entirely convincing overall. And Millwall are just so solid that it's hard to predict against them. When you consider that Stoke's defence has still been pretty leaky, that Blackburn game, they conceded 25 shots, but it was still their first clean sheet in a number of weeks. I'm going to have to go for Millwall to nick it. And for the fifth time, I mean, they're doing it every game. It's not like it's luck. You've got to go for it. I'm going to go for Millwall to win by one goal to nil. On to the 5 3 p.m. kickoff, starting with a big game in a battle of two sides expected to be at the bottom. It is Derby County versus Plymouth Argyle. Both sides picked up crucial wins in midweek. Wasn't enough for Plymouth to stay out of the relegation zone. However, a really crucial 1 0 win against Pompey in a game where you've got to concede they were probably second best for large parts. Started slowly, didn't really show a lot. Very surprised Obafemi started on the bench, but he proved his point once he got on, didn't he? Looks a real handful for them. And they have got attacking options. Players like Obafemi, Whitaker, and now Andre Gray. They can go and win you a game at this level. And that could be a difference maker for Plymouth as their great home form continues. However, for them, this game is on the road. And they're going to a Derby side who have been remarkably solid at home. Again, got a great win away at Coventry. Again, probably not the better side in that game. 1-2-1 one, one with one shot on target, which probably tells you all you need to know. Yes, they were fairly solid defensively, didn't get opened up a huge amount, but ultimately it was a really gutsy performance. They're setting up in a very clear way on the road and they've started to nick points now, which you've got to give them big credit for. Getting a draw at Millwall and a win at Coventry is a cracking effort. They were pretty close at Stoke as well. The question is, can they turn that one all draw at home to Hull into a home win? Well, they have done that a fair few times this season. It is only their second home match in the last six. 
And I'm going to back them against a Plymouth side that have been rotten and leaky on the road to go for a victory for Derby County. I do think they'll concede a goal as they so often do. I'm going to go for Derby to nick it at Pride Park by two goals to one in a big game against Plymouth. We approach the halfway point next with what looks like a home banker on paper, but you just never know at this level. It is Leeds United versus QPR. Leeds again frustrated at Millwall, a really difficult day for them. It's the same question we keep asking about Leeds. Have they got the players who can consistently put the ball in the back of the net? Have they got that 25-30 goal a season striker? It's all they're missing. They're not conceding more than one goal in a game, generally. The only time they did recently was that freak goal against Sunderland at the end. They're scoring a couple every other game. They're creating chances, but they've just had those frustrations, particularly on the road against Millwall and Bristol City, where they've opened teams up and just not been able to make it count. However, at home, it had been three successive wins against Plymouth, Watford, Sheffield United. QPR are in rotten form. 4-1 defeat against Borough just as they started to look more solid defensively against great sides in Sunderland and Burnley. It all then fell apart in midweek and yes, Middlesbrough don't often take their chances, but QPR gifted them a fair few, which is difficult to take. The second bottom, they're five adrift of safety now. Does Marty Sifuentes come under pressure? We've seen teams panic quite regularly in the championship. QPR have got a horrible mix though. They haven't got goals in them and they're struggling at the back at times as well. I think they'll try and keep it tight here. I think it's going to be backs against the wall and I think we have to go for a Leeds victory. There's a chance they could get frustrated, but I'm going to go comfortable. Two goals to nil for the home side. Let's move into the second half with a big game at Carrow Road. It is Norwich City versus Bristol City. The battle of the two mid-table teams in 11th and 12th at the minute. For Norwich, a frustrating day away at Sheffield Wednesday. It's actually a game I watched on Tuesday night. They were really poor. They were the second best side throughout. Sheffield Wednesday looked a real threat on the counter. They couldn't handle them defensively. They were giving the ball away a lot under pressure. And maybe that will be a strategy for Bristol City, who at times have sat deeper against certain sides recently. But I feel we'll go and try and press the ball against Norwich. They were frustrated themselves. I finally predict Bristol City to pick up a result. Then what do they do? Well, they shoot themselves in the foot in stoppage time and concede a late goal, something they've done quite frequently through the four years we've been doing this. To go ahead in the 75th minute and still lose the game against a very good side will be frustrating. And again, the way you can spin those stats work either way, but not the worst performance against a very good team. And this is a quite hard one to call because Norwich are very good at home this season. However, against Borough, they were open defensively. They've lost Josh Sargent till the new year, which means you can then focus on can we mark Borja signs out the game because Nunez isn't available as well. Hernandez has been out. They are missing a number of key players, which means you can then just go and man mark the one or two big threats. Is someone else going to step up to the plate for Norwich? I'm not sure. Bristol City had been on a decent run. They've been more solid generally this season. So weirdly, I'm going to sit on the fence with this one. I'm going to go for the championship's favourite scoreline. Had to throw one in eventually. One goal apiece at Carrow Road. We've got a big game at the bottom next. As two of the bottom five go head to head, it is Portsmouth versus Preston North End. Pompey defeated 1-0 against Plymouth. They played really well for large parts of the game. But again, not quite the solidity defensively. And just to be honest, they look like they wouldn't have scored if they'd been there all week, which is a real shame for them. At home, they've struggled for goals all season as well, which is a big worry going against a Preston side who were rock solid against Sunderland. To be fair to them, the first half, they were probably the better team. Second half, there wasn't a great deal in it, but Preston would say they probably edged the good chances in that match. But actually, you are seeing signs of progress under Paul Heckenbottom, despite a couple of iffy results here and there. I know they were beaten comfortably by Bristol City, but the first goal obviously was a hand of God moment. And aside from that, they've shown a bit more attacking quality as well. So going to be a tough game to call I think it's going to be low scoring it's one of those where you go for the nil nil one all or one nil either way and I think I'm going to go bold on this one I'm going to go for Pompey to nick a one nil home win I think they're going to be up for this game I think it's going to be a tighter defensive performance and it's another one a bit like I mentioned with Luton earlier I've just got a funny feeling about it so I'm going to stick my neck on the line as I often do when I've had a good match week I get overexcited and go for silly scores I'm going for one nil to Pompey I home to Preston now we move on to the side that have managed to steal all of the headlines this week. And no, it's not tabletop as Sunderland, though they're at home to Coventry City, who have sacked the longest serving EFL manager, the literal miracle man in Mark Robbins. 
I mean, we'll save it for the manager special when a new person comes in, but I was as speechless and as livid as most of the Coventry fans were today. The reaction from fans says it all. It is very rare that a manager gets sacked and you see almost a whole fan base unite against a board to say, what on earth are you doing? It shows a mark of respect to what the manager has done. He's lifted them from the ground up, playing in League Two at Northampton on a tight budget, to then getting them within a penalty kick of the Premier League a, a moment, a, a millimetre with an FA Cup final last season. It's just, it's a scandalous decision. I'm sorry. We'll cover the rest of it later. But Mark Robbins having won two of his last three against Borough and Luton, who will be competing for the top six, I'm sure, has now been sent his marching orders with Coventry seven points off the playoffs and having had a better start than they had the year they got to the playoff final. I, I can't say anymore. It genuinely, genuinely astounds me. Sunderland, a bit of frustration in front of goal, a couple of nil-nils in a row away at QPR and Preston, games they would have liked to have won, but we mentioned that they were dropping silly points and losing games earlier in the season on the road. They can keep winning their home games and nicking draws on the road, probably a pretty good recipe for the season. So I'm really confident with Sunderland at home. Regis Debris will be delighted he's not coming up against a Mark Robbins team. Yes, a little bit more unpredictable, but we saw last weekend Coventry away at Borough, what a threat they can be at good sides on the counter. So for me, I think this game becomes more likely to be a Sunderland victory based on what's happened. They had some titanic battles down in League One a few years ago. But this time, Mark Robbins will not be in a dugout. I'm going to go for Sunderland to win against a manager with no experience by two goals to nil at a stadium alike to maintain their place at the top. We move on to Sunday where there are three matches starting with arguably the biggest, certainly. The most hotly anticipated, it is Sheffield United versus Sheffield Wednesday, the Steel City derby. Sheffield United absolutely flying, would be joint top if it weren't for the two-point deduction. Again, a big late win away at Bristol City, showed another side of their game, just didn't give up and managed to grind out a win in a game where they weren't brilliant. For Sheffield Wednesday, they were brilliant against Norwich, a really comfortable display. And much needed after that weird freak show against Watford, which they just so often don't produce. So this is a tough game to call because you never know how teams are going to react in the derby. You've obviously got a couple of players who have played across the city. And with Sheffield United winning three in a row, Sheffield Wednesday playing well against some of the top sides this year. I think it's quite a hard one to call. However, Wednesday away from home haven't been brilliant. Sheffield United look great. In normal circumstances, I'd go for 2-1 here. But I just think the Sheffield Wednesday will try desperately to chase a point at the end and they might then get caught in the counter. So despite the fact Sheffield United seems to score two a game at home, I'm going to break that mould and go for three goals to one for Sheffield United with a late third on the counter. On to the second Sunday game, a 1pm kickoff between Hull City and West Bromwich Albion. Two sides that have had frustrating spells, but of course I am recording this before West Brom v Burnley on the Thursday, so I don't know the latest score. However, prior to that, five draws in a row, very solid at the back, only two goals conceded in those. However, only two goals scored in the last six as well. It's really difficult to see any other scoreline than a draw because I know Hull were frustrated in a 1-0 defeat at Oxford where they were really poor in fairness in midweek. However, prior to that, it had also been draws galore for them. They did keep the ball well, but they open up and give away chances. And I just don't know where to go with this one. I think I have to sit on the fence because you could probably make a case for either side nicking it. So I'm going to go for the championship's favourite scoreline for the second time this weekend. And I think a lot of you will probably be following suit. 1-1 between Hull City and West Brom, which leads us on to our final game. A 3pm kickoff on Sunday between two sides that are also struggling for goals in recent weeks. It is Burnley versus Swansea City. Again, Recording before the Burnley West Brom game. However, prior to that, three blanks in the last six. Really frustrated at Millwall at the weekend, weren't they, in that 1 0 defeat? Didn't create a lot. Haven't shown that attacking intent. I know they scored a lot of goals early on, but we talked a few times here about the fact they were severely outperforming their XG. They were scoring virtually every chance they had. They were being given gifts, particularly by Luton and Cardiff, those first couple of matches. They've not really looked convincing going forward all season. It just hasn't quite clicked. For Swansea, back-to-back -back victories, which is really important. A great one on the road at Oxford. And then another classic gritty 1-0 at home to Watford, which was thoroughly deserved in fairness. Much more solid defensively this season. But again, is that attacking record there? It had been five in a row without a goal before these two victories. 
So I have to go low scoring here. I do think Burnley will win purely due to home advantage. But I don't think this is going to be a great game to watch. Stick to the Steel City derby if you're watching one of the three on Sunday. I'm going to go for Burnley to win this one just by one goal to nil at home to Swansea. So with that out of the way, let's have a quick recap of what we've gone for in match week 15. And only one team is scoring three in my book. And only that's going to be a late goal when the other team are chasing the game. I've gone for Sheffield United to win the Steel City derby 3-1 at home to Wednesday. I've gone for league leader Sunderland to beat managerless Coventry by two goals to nil. Still can't believe the managerial choice. And I've gone for 2-1 all draws across the match week as well. There's a big 2-1 win for Luton away at Middlesbrough, which may well leave me with egg on my face when we return in two weeks' time. Let me know your predictions down in the comments, though. Do you agree or disagree with mine? If you haven't done your Thursday night prediction for West Brom Burnley yet, you've got till 8pm this evening. Let us know your score predictions, and if you beat or match my overall score, you'll get a shout-out when we return after the international break. In the meantime, though, if you did enjoy this one, please do chuck a thumbs up on the video, subscribe and turn that notification bell on to stay up to date with everything. I'll see you back here in a couple of weeks time. Enjoy the little breather from championship football. Hopefully it'll be another good scoring match week for me. And more importantly, after midweek, hopefully there'll be a few more goals about.